Okay, guys and gals, this is one of my favorite topics because it is really, <coughs> really useful. We're going to be talking about parent functions and how to transform them. It's, this particular topic is really useful because it teaches us a framework for understanding a bunch of graphs. If we really get and commit to understanding the what's uh, presented in this lesson, then we go a long way to being able to graph just like almost everything because this, this applies to so many other things. Let's go ahead and dive in. So we're going to look at four different parent functions. There are more. We'll get those mostly in pre-cal and may, there actually there's a couple more that we get in this class too, but we'll talk about those later. We're going to start with four parents. This first one is the, the least like of the things. So it's, we start with a constant function. So this one is the only one out of all of them that when we're looking at it we're going to look at kind of an example picture instead of the only parent right this one uh, is so we're talking about horizontal the parent function of horizontal lines so the parent function is f of x a equals a where a is some constant now it's the name constant function so what is a constant in math constant so we're talking about a number here. So we're talking about five, six. In this case, we're talking about one, right? So this is a, an example of the constant parent function. Now, depending on what this number is, it'll either raise or lower this function, right? And so that is the constant parent function. Now, the next we're talking about, we've seen a lot since pre-algebra, probably. We're going to look at the linear parent function, right? So the linear parent function, now we've talked about linear functions a lot in this class, a whole lot more even in Algebra 1 and then probably in pre-algebra and all of those things. So this is the parent function. We've got a, just a, the parent function is, and we'll see what we mean by parent function, especially towards uh, later in this video when we talk about examples and how to transform them and, and why they're called parent functions. So just just get this notes down for now. So linear parent, parent function looks like that. He's got a slope of one. So it's up one over one. He's got a y-intercept of zero, right? So now we're going to kick it up a notch. This next one is one that we saw in the last lesson where we take that linear function and we modify it a little bit. So this is the absolute value parent function. So in this one especially is where we're going to kind of start and we'll see some more specific on this here in just a minute we're going to kind of start talking about ways you could transform this so if i started with this as the parent what all could i change what all could i tweak what all small changes would keep it the same thing this v shape and i could change it well i could move it up i could move it down i could move it right i could move it left right so i could do all of those things I could also squash it in a little bit. I could stretch it out some, right? I could do all of those things. I could even take the thing and flip it all the way around so it was a V going down. And we'll talk about more specifics about those and what Matt, how we change this guy to the parent, turn it to a child function, right? So where we have added other things in. So that's the absolute value parent function. We saw this in the last lesson. It just looks like a V. And if we were to kind of describe this, one of the key features here is that it relates, like if I put this guy back up there, it's, you can't see up through all that gibberish, but if we kind of compare this to the linear parent function, all we did was it still goes through this point right here. It goes through the point one, one, but it takes these and it flips them up. And so now it's going through one, or excuse me, negative one, one instead of negative one, negative one, right? So that's that's how it changes. And that, that one, one and the negative one, one, those are going to be really important for in just a minute. So that's, that's why I'm pointing those out. So the last parent function we're going to talk about at this point is the quadratic parent function. We're going to spend a lot more time talking about quadratics and kind of how to deal with them and, and all of these puzzle pieces about them. But for now, this is the parent. So the key features of the parent is A, it makes a specific shape. Now, what is this shape called? This shape is called a parabola. Parabola. That's the name of this shape, which is kind of like a U with a little pointy, pointy bottom down here. Now, there's some key features that I want to point out. One is that this goes through the point one, one. And that's, I, I said that again, and I'm saying it again now, and we'll say it again, again in a minute when we see how to change and how to transform those. And it also has a, this corner is called the vertex. 
which is the same actually as so if I if I flip back and I pull back up the absolute value one the the little corner there that's also called the vertex so the little corner of a thing is called the vertex right so it's, it's also like corners on a shape right those are also vertices which is the plural of course right and so it goes through these points which is important we'll keep that in mind when we look at our next thing so let's pull up the next thing so when we're transforming a function now this one let's <coughs> i i didn't really put any any uh features on here this could be the absolute value or it could be the squared and we'll see examples using both those are the main ones we're going to see now the the same transformations also work for linear ones and for uh well constant ones a little bit different because it doesn't have any variables right it just it can only move up and down it doesn't have any it doesn't it it's less complex like the single celled organisms of the parents i don't know the analogy only goes so far right so this is kind of the generic form of a parent function right again this can apply to different things we'll see some specific examples so there are some different letters going on here and each one of these does something different let me flip over to my mo to my moats to my notes to make sure i'm not forgetting anything ang or misstating i yeah anyway I, i've already made some mistakes in this unit so we'll try to minimize the rest of them see what happens so these are some different ways now so you notice that there's in the inside parentheses now that can mean some different things so like if we're talking about a quadratic that would be like x plus two and so this is the like the h would be like this guy or if i put like five right here that would be that guy right and then there's also a zone outside the parentheses so there's there you need to make sure you understand the idea that there is an inside the parentheses and an outside of the parentheses so like the same idea but if i had a if i had an absolute value maybe it might be something and we had outside the parentheses if i had minus eight that would be like this guy or if i had 15 that would be like that guy right and so there's inside the parentheses in this case parentheses or absolute value right and out and or parentheses with a squared right so there's inside and there's outside so that's that's what we're talking about now let's get this labeled and then we'll see some examples we'll put some meat on the bones and we'll see what it does to the pictures whoops got a little bit excited there uh, there we go all right so let's label these so how does the a b h and k change the function or transform it so we'll start here at the end this k it is a vertical translation which you could also call a shift Okay, so this moves your function. If this changes, it moves it up or down. So if K is positive, then it moves up. If K is negative, then it moves down. So if it was plus two, it would take that function and it would move it two up. If it was minus two, it would move it two down. Easy peasy, simple. Let me turn my notifications off again. Oh, text message, doesn't matter. Don't care, go away. All right, there we go. All right, sorry for the interruption. All right, so moving on to the next one, we've got H. Now, H is, is a horizontal translation. You see, we've got adding and subtracting there. Those are translations or horizontal shift, uh, same, same words. So horizontal old <laughs> translation. I can spell, don't accuse me otherwise, or do, whatever. Translation, or a shift. Okay, and so that's left and right. Now here, this is important, and this is why this negative is there, er, to help us help us remember this, this partially. It's all, you know, yeah, I won't make things confusing by saying more words than I need to. So the fact that this is negative helps us remember that this moves opposite how we would expect. So it moves opposite. 
inside it's inside the parentheses and it moves opposite that's that's important so this if h is positive then you would think that it would move to the right right because you know positive numbers go that way well in fact that's wrong in the parentheses when it's in the parentheses if it's positive then it actually moves to the left again it's the opposite of what you might expect and that's and that's important that's going to that pattern is going to follow all the way down to absolute value to, to quadratics to cubics to square roots to exponential etc 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 right to all the parents Right? If it's negative, if H is negative, then it moves to the left. So inside the parentheses, it moves opposite. We'll see some examples, put some meat on these bones here in a second. So we've got two more to talk about. X is right. That's, that's just the independent variable, right? That's the same as it's always been. For B, B is a horizontal, horizontal, Dilation. Now, what does dilation mean? If you go to the eye doctor and you're and you get your eyes dilated, right? They get bigger, right? So dilation in this case is it gets bigger or it gets smaller. Now, <coughs> this is a little different. It's not, it's not, we're less looking at positive and negative on this guy. We're looking, we're looking more at whether it is great if B is greater than one or if it is less than one, well, really between zero and one, right? Between zero and one. So if it's basically, if it's a fraction, if it's a bigger number than a, than a fraction, or if it's a smaller number. So that's, those are the two options. Same thing for A as well, right? And so, okay, so inside the parentheses still moves opposite to what you would expect. So if it's greater than one, so like this one right here, then it compresses. It compresses horizontally, so it scorches in. So if it's, if it's like 28, then it's going to be really scorched in. If it's three, it's going to be a bit scorched in. And actually it's, well, I won't spoil, spoil a surprise in a minute, but if it is less than one, so like if it's one half or if it's three fourths or two thirds, one eighth, any of those kinds of numbers, right? So between zero and one, then it stretches horizontally. So it gets wider, right? Stretches. Is that how you spell that word? Doesn't look right, but apparently it matches, right? So. Now, for you may have already figured out and guessed what A is going to be based on kind of our pattern. A is outside the parentheses, so it is a vertical up and down dilation. It's multiplied, dilation, multiplied, dilation. Ooh, patterns. Might make it easier to memorize, maybe. Might, might just have to make flashcards and, and roll with it. So for this one, we're also, we're looking at the same idea. If A is greater than one, or if it is between zero and one, right? So if it's either one of those things, now this is outside the parentheses, so it moves the way you would expect. See, we've got all kinds of patterns that just repeat. Which I, I love this lesson, I'm telling you. There's so many things that just make sense. I should like not do that that way. <laughs> if it is between zero and one, then it compresses. So it takes, and instead of being like this, it goes like this. You see how it compresses down, pushes down. This, this, one, this one right here is one of those ones that I feel like gets confusing to people out here. So a, a compression would be squashed down this way. A... <coughs> A stretching would be up this way. So it almost, they're kind of the opposite of each other. So this would be a compression for if it's a fraction, so a half, one eighth, two thirds, etc. Compression. If it is greater than one, it stretches. 
And finally, if there's one more thing we need to put in there, if A is less than zero, so if it's negative, then it flips the graph, flips vertically. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. All right, so these all kind of look at, these are not everything possible by any stretch of the imagination, but let's, let's take a look. And I'm going to kind of draw these in a truncated form and smaller so that I can kind of put them all in the, gra all in the same thing. At least that's my plan. We'll see how it works and see how it looks and see whether it's confusing. So we're looking at this pink one right here. Number one, we've got f of x equals the absolute value of negative three. So what we need to first identify is which parent are we talking about? Well, in this case, we're talking about the absolute value parent function. What does he look like? He looks like a, oop, that doesn't work if you're not holding shift, does it? He looks like a V, right? So it's going to be something like that. That is the parent function. Normally, he starts right here and he goes, whoosh, whoosh, right? That's what the parent absolute value function does. Now, what has changed? Well, we changed, we subtracted outside of the absolute value. So it's outside of the parentheses and it's subtracted. So we're talking about moving the way we expect. We're talking about a translation or a shift and it goes the way we expect. So this is going to take the graph and it's going to move it down three. Nothing else has changed. Only that one thing. So it's going to take that parent that normally lives right here, passing through one, one and negative, uh, negative one, one, and it's going to move it down three. So the vertex now is going to be right here instead. And then it, but nothing, there's no dilation, none, right? There's nothing multiplied, right? So we don't, so we're not going to change. It's still going to go, oh, through one, one, but one, one is now shifted down three. So to get to one, one from the vertex, you go up one over one, right? So we're going to do the same thing to figure out how to graph this. We're just going to go up one over one. So it's going to look the exact same as that parent there would look. It's the same idea as that one. So that's what that one looks like. The arrows, remember, mean this goes on forever, so it would actually extend and keep on going. So we took the parent that normally looks like this, and we I'm going to erase this in a minute, and we shifted the whole thing down by three, right? So that's what we did with that pink one. That's outside. That's that K variable. Now, what about this yellow one, G of X, number two example? So this one, we're talking about quadratic parent formula. So Parent formula. <laughs> parent function. So we're talking about the parent function that goes like this, still passes through that one, one, and still goes right here. And it looks like this. It looks like a parabola with a rounded, rounded bottom, right? It's more like a U than a V. And so the parent looks like that. So what has changed? Well, we added two inside parentheses. So we're talking about that H variable. So that is a horizontal shift. It's inside the parentheses, so it moves the opposite of what we expect. So instead of moving to the right, it actually, what am I doing? Instead of moving to the right, it actually is going to move to the left, right? So it's going to take this and it's going to keep it basic. It's going to keep it just the way it looks, but move it to the left by two. So instead of the vertex being at zero, zero, it's going to be at negative two, zero. Now, Normally it goes, we go up one over one to get, to get where we're going to graph it, right? So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go up one over one from the new vertex. Now X squared is four. So you might note that it goes up like by four after that. And, and that's kind of enough points to be getting on with. Now we're going to, we're going to learn a lot more details about how to get more specifics and all kinds of, of cool stuff about parabolas later. But for now, that is good enough. So that inside that H variable is going to shift the quadratic parent function. It's going to shift it over by two. We could actually keep taking this up, whatever else, all of those things. All right, let's look at this next one. Let's look at this purple one. So what changed? We changed this A variable. Now it actually kind of changed two things, right? Because it made it four and it went to 
neg it went negative. So what is that negative going to do? It's going to flip it over. And the four is going to change the way it goes. Now this one is pretty. This one is kind of pretty intuitive on how it's going to work. And so we're not even going to worry about plotting points. And this green one in a minute, we're going to. I'm going to plot some points to kind of show you and kind of prove what we're going to do. Um, I think we're going to get a little bit congested here. So I think I'm going to grab all of this and say control x and give me a new layer real quick and control v Oop. move it over whoops we can do this whoa <laughs> control shift v there you go magic <laughs> we did it so there it is All right now so let's do this guy without the congestion. So it's gonna take the absolute value parent function. The absolute value parent function looks like this guy, right? And then, so it's gonna change him. Now, what did it change? It changed the A, right? So that is a vertical stretch, stretch or compress, right? So that's what we're changing. So it's, and it's, it's greater than one. It's actually less than, but it's greater than one. So it's gonna be a stretch, but it's negative greater than one so it's going to flip down and stretch so what's going to happen is it is going to still have the same vertex we have no adding or subtracting right so there's no translation no shifting right so it's going to have the same vertex but it's going to go down now instead now if it just was like say it was negative absolute value of x then it would just be this but flip down Makes sense? Easy peasy. But since it is negative four, it's also giving it a stretch. So instead of going through, instead of going through negative or one, negative one, which is the flip over, it's going to go through ooh, one, negative one, two, three, four. So it's stretching by a factor of four. So it's going to look like this. Hey, so that is what that number three looks like. It flipped over because of the negative and it stretched by a factor of four. See that that's pretty easy and pretty intuitive, right? Factor four, we, instead of going one and one, we go four and one, right? That's, that's fairly intuitive. Now this green one is a little less intuitive. Let's kind of, let's do us a little table, right? That's, that's, I, I can't hammer that home enough that, if nothing, if nothing else, you can always plot a table. So let's do x and t of x. t of x, right? So let's do our old standbys. Let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Now, we already know the vertex isn't going to shift because we already learned about parent functions. So we know that's going to be 0. <laughs> Done. All right, so let's plug in these other numbers. So if I put in a negative 2. I got three times negative two squared. Three times negative two is negative six squared. A negative squared, that parentheses are important, is positive. So it's positive 36. So it went up a lot, right? So we're not we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit more when we get to the one part because the one is is where that shift happens. Because normally Normally, the parent function looks like this, right? Normally, it just kind of goes, whoosh, and then whoosh, that's the normal half of the parent function. So how much are we going to compress by? <laughs> so we're expecting, remember what I said a minute ago on what it's doing? It should be going, whoosh, right? Because it's opposite of what you'd expect because it's inside the parentheses, right? So let's plug in another one. Let's plug in our negative one. So three times negative one squared, three times negative one is negative three. Three, negative three squared is positive nine. Oh, whoa, look at that. That's, let's finish this table. Actually, we don't even have to finish. It's gonna be, it's gonna be symmetric. So it's gonna be nine and 36. Now, what did we change? Let me, now that I've got this here, what did we change? Now, now that we kind of got some punchline and we got some got some intuition about what's what's going on, this is going to be a ver a excuse me horizontal compression. Horizontal because inside the parentheses it is a compression, even though it's greater than one because it's inside parentheses, so it's opposite of what we'd expect, right? So it's going to go. Whoosh. 
it's going to go by not a factor of three, but a factor of nine. Instead of going to, instead of going one, instead of going up, up one and then, or excuse, over one and then up three, we went over one, we went over one and up nine. What happened? Well, here's the short answer. You ready? You may have already figured it out. You may be already seeing. What's three squared? Nine. So the factor is actually how much it's going to stretch or compress is actually this number squared instead of just that number. So it so it change so inside the parentheses as far as the multiplication part, it changes the graph even more than outside of it. Right? So and again, driving that point home as hard as I possibly can. If you get confused on one of these things, just plot some points and graph the thing and you can figure out what's happening. So it's going to be way up here, which is like off my graph. It's going to stretch by, it's like barely got it rounded and then do the best we can do with something like that. It's an ugly graph, but it'll work for now to get the point across. So that is parent functions and, tran and transformations. We're going to talk about a lot more with specifically quadratic functions later, but that's kind of the beginning framework. That this, this kind of slide, I guess, if you will, oops, go even further back. This guy and this base thing is, is the real meat and potatoes of this lesson because that tells us a frame, this is kind of a framework for how to change like any function later. And the more practice we get, the better. So thank you for joining us. If you're one of my students, I'll see you in class. Don't forget to do your homework. Uh, if you're not one of my students, thanks for joining us. Let us know how else we can help you with math, science, or homeschooling in general. Have a good day. Bye-bye.